What is going on, everyone? Welcome to episode 85 of Little Root Lessons. As always, I am your host, Carter Noble, joined by our fantastic co-host, Carl Wilkin. What's up, dude? Not a whole lot. We had uh, an ATX event that we helped out with a little bit uh, over we the did. past weekend. It went off without a hitch, thankfully. Uh, we have results from that as well. I've got all the data compiled, and I've got graphics made up and all that fun stuff. So we'll have some... We have some good stuff to talk about this week. For sure. Um, I know I, the charity tournament we had, uh, well, ATX organized everything um, to go and help the Santos family. Um, Adam is a big, big part of their community, is, of course, a part of ours as well. And as a result, when uh, Gemma posted that they were doing something, but they weren't ready to announce it yet. And I messaged her. I said, hey, is this something for Adam? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, can we get involved? She's yeah. like, yeah, of course. <laughs> so um, we we jumped on board. Of course, they ran basically – they they basically did everything. Um, we had a bunch of people in our community pool money together to uh, donate to help the, the cause and everything. Uh, gave out some free entries and everything from that. And – um ended up having 31 players in the event yep um i have no idea how much money we actually raised because it was all through gofundme and the uh prevent fan prevent cancer foundation uh the prevent cancer research fund yeah okay i was gonna say i i knew it was one of the like cancer charities but i wasn't entirely sure exactly which one um um i will say that they are very appreciative uh, we are very appreciative of everyone that come, that came out to support and donate. Uh, we're having our own little thing during the Invitational. It's a raffle thing that Navier and the rest of our mod team is kind of helping out run with and run around with. Uh, there's an informational post on the Discord, but the, the gist of it is is you every $1 gets entered into the raffle. You can enter, if you donate $10, you get 10 entries, so on and so forth. There's a bunch of shiny legendaries and mythicals being handed out here, so. If yeah, they're donate, all, cool. they're all legal yep. um, event legendaries. Um, I have an event Arceus from the Japanese events from forever ago that I've sat on for ever and i'm probably gonna throw that in as well well there you go there's even an arceus um, for everyone to pick up just in time for pokemon legends arceus the downside is is you can't bring the sword and shield not yet <laughs> not yet but anyway. yeah it's the there's a there was an old 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 japanese uh shiny arceus event that was back in the diamond and pearl era if i remember correctly or black and white because Sometime i in there I don't think you could ever actually get an Arceus in Diamond and Pearl. I don't think they ever... glitch glitch a way to get it. But they never officially released the the Eon Flute. Is that right? Whatever it is, yeah. The the, the way to get it was never actually officially unlocked. You could... Azir Flute. Is that a thing? I I don't don't know. know I didn't play Gen 4. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but I do know, like, knowing about glitches and whatnot, the, uh, there was a way to glitch Arceus in the game, and if you did glitch Arceus into the game, you could get level 1 Palkia, Dialga, and whatnot. Uh, yes, it is the Azure Flute, which I don't believe was ever officially released. It was. Not, not that I know of. But anywho, we're getting off track here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so that's probably going to be added to the price pool just to incentivize people to come play and donate. And, of course, all that is going to uh, the the Santos family as well. So I'm very excited to get that up and going. That's going to be um, that should, the drawings are going to place. The drawings will be during the invitational. The uh, yep. donation links should be live now, the form to fill out. Yep. Uh, so what you'll do is you'll there's a code stamp for each giveaway. If you want it entered in certain giveaways, you have to put that code with the form. So if you wanted to donate ten dollars to win a Dada Zarud or Shiny Celebi, whatever one it is, there's a code for that. You put that in when you enter in the form, and it enters your entries into that. Uh, 
Same for like, there's a shiny Dialga Palkia set. There's a. Um, Which I there? actually don't have those. Like, I think I have the rest of them. I don't think I have the Dialga Palkia. Uh, I didn't get the Dialga. I didn't get the shiny ones. I got the Cherish Ball, whatever ones they were ah. doing for the year. What the one gotcha. whatever year of mythicals or whatever it was legendaries mm-hmm. or whatever nonsense however i do have the shiny zet from x and y i do have the yveltal xerneas and the zygarde which makes me very happy yeah i do not have those um but you know it is what it is so, so if you what? are interested in checking all that um discord link is always on the show notes that's posted a couple of different places and of course we'll remind people as as the event goes on and everything else so yeah um you wanna you wanna talk about some data, man? Let's get it's to been, some data. It's, it's been, been a hot minute, minute since we've talked about some data. So, so, um, as we discussed, we had thirty one players in the event. Yep. Um, to the surprise of absolutely no one, Incineroar is the most played mon. Um, what's interesting is by how much. I, you know, I'm, not, have... I'm not actually surprised by this. <laughs> but like, I I think what what uh gets me is the difference between incineroar and rillaboom which is second here um at 22 and then 13 so i can so, explain that one away right now do it Cernia, knock me out uh Cernius and kyogre teams like to play serena because mm-hmm. they hate prior- being hit by priority and rillaboom's whole move set is pretty much priority when the yeah, only move honestly. you can use is usually knockoff or U-turn because these AD sets don't run Woodhammer too often, Rillaboom usage is going to go down, and you're going to find other grass types to play with. Which is why Amoongus is here in third. Um, let's see. Serena is down here at 17. So honestly, not too, too terrible. But, you know, yeah, there there is quite a few uh, grass types here. You have Cartana above Serena, not Amon. I've seen a ton of in this format but i do like it uh i like it quite a bit especially going into series 11 i think it's a a mon that definitely could see a resurgence in the in the very near future yeah and series 11 cartano is going to be great because it's great with dynamax and all that because mm-hmm. you get max deal spike max airstream uh, you can do max overgrowth things if you want to. You get max knuckle for attack boosts. So Cartana de- definitely benefits more in a Dynamax format than it does in the non-Dynamax format where everything's outspeeding it and everything carries a fire coverage move of some sort. Uh, so, you know, as we mentioned, uh, Incense here at 22, really booms at 13. Uh, Amoongus is here at 12, so not a huge difference between the two grass types. No. Uh, making up 42 and 39%, essentially. Um, a little bit off, but close enough for my sake. Um, Reggie Eliki here at 11. Um, Rapid Strike Urshifu at 9. Xerneas at 7. So our first restricted at number 6 is Xerneas. What do you think about Xerneas? Uh, Xerneas is very good still, even though no one plays it. I think Xerneas sees less play on ladder just because people are bored. I honestly could see that. I think this being a event that people want to actually come in and compete um, incentivizes people to bring in your Xerneas and your Zacians. But honestly, you know, there's seven Xerneas here. There's four Zacians. Like, honestly, a pretty big difference between the two of them when you're looking at 32 teams, or 31 teams, um, you know, just under, just under a quarter of them being Xerneas is pretty, pretty surprising. Because if you actually look at Picolytics, Zacian is pretty high in comparison to, um, to Xerneas last time I checked. Yeah, uh, like I said, ladder, laddering, Zacian kind of just fits in the meta better. Just because mm-hmm. it's it's got better answers to a lot more things, whereas Xerneas requires a whole lot more skill and uh, is better in best of threes overall rather than best of ones. Uh, Xerneas is currently at ten percent, and Zashian is at just under thirty one. Yeah, so makes makes sense. It's the difference uh, especially, of ladder, especially versus like best you of said. Three. Yeah, that's that's a big thing. Is this being a best of three tour? I'm not really surprised to see uh, Xerneas definitely coming out to play. Yeah. Uh, uh, also here at seven we have Landorus, 
Suicune at five. Uh, and then a slew of fours here. We have Zacian, Volcarona, Tornadus, Kyogre, Kartana, and Kali Shadow. And Kali Ice, actually. What do you think of what do you think of the Kali forms? Uh Calyrex Shadow and Calyrex Ice are both very popular over on the ATX server. Uh I don't know how many Monday Night Friendlies you watch. There is this Calyrex Ice team that just shows up like every other week and just runs people over. It is it is so much fun to watch because there's just so many little things going on with the team and it's so cool. Uh I'm not sure if it was one of the, if it made it to this event. I haven't gone through all the top 12 or all the top or any of the actual rest of the 31 teams to actually look. So I'll have to go back and check later to see like what teams showed up with Calyrex Ice, what teams showed up with Calyrex Shadow. Uh, because we actually don't see a whole lot of those in the top cut. We'll get Interesting. To that. Um, you know, I have the the top cut teams that we're going to talk about here. And I haven't really looked through them. Uh, there's one that I sent you that I saw on Twitter that I'm very excited to talk about when we get yeah, to we'll, it. Yeah, we'll talk about that when we get to it. That'll be That's our laddering team for this week. And then a um, bunch of threes here as well. We have... I'm assuming this is Dark Urshifu. Yes. Okay. Um, Serena, Stack Attacker, Primarina, Oranguru, Lunala, and Gyarados. Anything specifically you want to talk about here? Uh, one Calyrex Ice did not have a Oranguru on their team, and I'm sad. I'm not actually surprised by that. Um, I wonder if... I just want to quickly look through down here at the ones... Just to see if there's anything spicy, such as a... I don't see... Um, I don't see a Lorantis. That would be, like, the one thing I could see in that slot instead, but... Yeah, there is uh, no Lorantis. No Lorantis, but we have three Orangaroo. Which, honestly, man, I've always really loved Orangaroo. Um... It was introduced in Gen 6, is that right? Uh, Gen 7. It was 7? Okay. Because yeah. I know we had... It's the opposite Pasimian. And then we also had Kamala in Gen 7? Yep. So, like, it always threw me off, because, and as a result, I always thought it was, like, Pasimian and Kamala were, like, the version exclusives. Ah. Um, and as a no. result... <laughs> You know, I'm just like, well, that means Orangaroo has to be older than that, so... Nope. It, I don't know, man. It just seems like a Gen 6 mon. I don't know where it would fit in in, you know, the the region, but... Yeah, it, I was just like, I don't know where you would fit Orangaroo into the metropolitan, busy, France-like area. Like, I don't, I don't see how you, you know, fit the monkey you have, there. You have orangutans running around, uh, <laughs> running around France, right? That's, that's a thing. No. It's not. It's fair. <laughs> um, I like seeing Gyarados at three. Gyarados, Gyarados is... is very, very unique. Um, I'm pretty sure it's, like, even with Wakan, it probably still dies to Eliki, like, regardless of what you do. Uh, obviously, I'm going off of literally zero calcs here, but... There I, might be an AV set that survives. There's no way AV makes it live as opposed to Wakan. I don't... I'd be very impressed if that's the case. Again, not actually looking at this, but someone who is uh, more talented than me can do the math for me. But yeah, I mean, I I like Gyarados quite a bit. It's it's a mon I've always had a uh, a natural drawn affinity to, and you know, of course, it's one of the many mons that our server is known for over the the last year and a half. But I don't know how I feel about it in the context of a format where Eliki and Rillaboom are both pretty popular. Fun I think Intimidate fact. is very good. But I'm not sure if I like the like. I, I think Gyarados's typing leaves a lot to be desired right now. Uh, you can get away with uh, assault vest if you're careful. Two fifty two with one hundred and ninety six HP EVs. You can survive Volt Switch a hundred percent of the time, and Thunderbolt is eighty seven percent to Oko with assault vest. 
Huh. Is that timid or? Uh, that is timid with focus sash. Interesting. Which is pretty much become the norm again. Yeah, not not actually surprised by that. Um, um the same set. Uh, if you do the same thing with Wakan, you're guaranteed to survive Thunderbolt. Uh, but you definitely need some special defense investment to survive it. Uh, to survive Thunderbolt, you still survive. Oh, I, Bolt I forgot. I'm over here looking at it, and I forgot to put on assault vest. I'm like, Carl, this says you're dead. <laughs> yeah, Thunderbolt. Uh, 252 with 196 HP, showing it's a favorable roll. Yeah. For for Thunderbolt. Yep, and then with Wakanberry, if you're the same set. 196, 252, uh, Adamant, you can survive, but it's a lot of special defense investment, meaning you don't have any attack investment. Let's see, 196, that leaves you a little bit. Not not a ton, but a little bit. I mean, I, I, my, brain, my brain is fried. I, I literally can't do math right now. It leaves you 140 EVs in attack. Thank you. That is how you, that is to survive Thunderbolt 100% of the time. So it's 172 special defense, 196 HP, and 140 in attack with Wakanberry. Wait, it leaves you how much in attack? 140 EVs. 196 HP, 140 uh-huh. in attack, 172 in special defense. In special oh, defense. I was I was doing 252. That's that that, that's the that. minimum you need. Gotcha. So pray you don't get hit with fake out and you'll survive. Gotcha, gotcha. But a lot of the times you just get Gyarados out of there. You never have to worry. Oh about that. yeah, just just don't even attempt to worry about it. Yeah, like you could just get out of dodge and you'll be fine. That's why assault vest is so much more common. Looking at these twos here, we see Torkoal, Tapu Fini, Galarian Moltres, Milotic. Larius, Landris Therian, Female and Didi, Grim Snarl. Uh, there's a Ditto down here. I see Spirit Tomb, which is super duper cool. Uh, Eternatus, and then Dracovish. There's a lot of unique twos down here. There's there's a lot to talk. Uh, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, Torkoal, I see mostly pairing like with these these Trick Room focused. Um, Cali Ice slash Lunala teams. Um, I really like it next to Orangaroo as well. Like it, it does literally the same thing that that Cali Ice does, except instead of firing off glacial lances, you're firing off uh, eruptions in the sun. Mm-hmm. So like you're you're doing just as much, if not more, damage with Torkoal next to Orangaroo and then instructing. But the the plus side to Cali Ice is of course. The second one most likely is going to hit harder because you get your your attack boost. Mm-hmm. So then the next turn you just get to clean up the game, potentially. That's that's in you know the magical Christmas land where your opponent never clicks protect and everything goes your way. Yeah, I'm interested in these Eternatus teams. Are we talking about any of those today? Uh, I don't. I think there's one. Cool. I am I am Dang. excited to see it when we get there. I I like me some good Eternatus no, teams. There isn't one. There Dang. is not one. I, I wonder... did find the one Venusaur though. I'm curious as to what the uh the Eternatus teams look like. Just well, we'll this have to, we can go back and look. We will have time to do that later. Yeah, that's future Carter's problem. Yeah. Uh, current Carter wants to bust through this so we can talk about some more stuff. So we have, yeah, two dittos to end out the list there. Uh, and then a bunch of one ofs that I'm just going to quickly fire through and then we can talk about here in a second. Uh, I'm assuming this is Kanto Zapdos? Correct. Okay. Whimsicott, Weavile, Venusaur, Togekiss, Tapu Koko, Sceptile, Salazzle, Sableye, Rotom Heat, Reshiram, Reggie Drago, uh, Raichu, P2, Alolan Elogen- Persian, uh, Pelipper, Nihilego, Mimikyu, Meowstic Male, I'm assuming? I would assume so, yes. Okay. Ho-Oh, Greedent, uh, Gorgeist, 
Mm-hmm. Which there is a difference in the forms here, right? So small, small is faster but less bulky. Yeah, small is okay. faster but less HP. Um, Frost Moth. Where we're talking about that one, I know where this one's at. Okay, so cool. <laughs> we'll talk about that one. Uh, Dusclops, Dragonite, Dialga, Comfey, Cinderace, and Araquanid. A bunch to unpack here. Where do you want to start? Uh, we'll talk about Frostmoth and Sceptile um, and Dragonite when we get to them in the top cut. Uh, Alolan Persian is something that they really, like, something is like kind of unique that we don't see a whole lot of, and I think it's super cool. Um, Togekiss is something we also don't see very often. That's kind of neat. Looking through the rest of this, uh, some of it seems kind of standard. Uh, hi, Adam. I see your green there. I know you played round one. <laughs> uh, did, did Adam end up playing? <laughs> he played round one, and then he had to go. Good enough, man. Yep. Um, but the rest of this seems like just kind of unique niche stuff that people like to play with. Uh, Tapu Coco, Comfey, Dialga, Cinderace, Dusclops. Things we don't normally see in Series 10 because they just don't stand stack up the same way without Dynamax around. Um, which is kind of cool, but... Uh, we we don't we only there's a reason we're only going to talk about a handful of these when we get mm-hmm. top cut instead of all of them because not all Pokemon are created equal unfortunately. Yep, I uh this is a little bit of a side tangent, and I think I think I sent this TikTok to you, but there is a uh some TikTok I found of someone doing like uh Gym Leader Castle randomizer on uh Pokemon Stadium two. Mm-hmm. Did I send this to you? Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't think you sent it to me. Okay. Uh, and the announcer pronounces Raichu as Raichu. <laughs> huh. <laughs> and so, like, I almost instinctively said that when I was reading through this. Because I just saw this, I think, last night. And the guy's, you know, the, the guy who's playing through is just like, did the people, like, just hand the announcer a slip of Pokemon names and say, yeah, good luck, have no context reading these? <laughs> Probably. Back then, yeah. I'm, I would be very surprised if they didn't. <laughs> oh, it just, it made me laugh. I'm just like, because, like, obviously to us who have played Pokemon for 25 years at this point, Raichu is Raichu. Yeah. Uh, but, like, I, I definitely could see how someone, especially back then, who isn't uh, well-versed in the Pokemon universe, could read this as Raichu. Like, and, like... That's just, just hilarious. Oh, yeah. And, like, that's a simple one. There are some very, very uh, obscure Pokemon names now. Like, Nihilego, um, like, just... Quickly pulling out some other ones here. You have stuff like uh, Serena. Like, the the double consonant beginning here is pretty awkward. Uh, of course, you have your standard Kyogre versus Kyogre. Rayquaza. Yep, that's me all the time. <laughs> um, Rayquaza versus Rayquaza. Like, yep. uh, there's no wrong way to pronounce it. But I know Raichu is incorrect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fun fact, I ran into Pelipper on Laddering last week. Pelipper is a Pokemon that exists. Uh, it didn't get to do anything. Yeah. Because it was Damp Rock and I Thunderbolted it. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> they wanted to extend the rain turns because they're, they they had a whole rain team, which if you mm-hmm. haven't watched the laddering, go back and watch it. Uh, it would have been up on Thursday, if I remember correctly. Um, it's the last match I played. It was Pelipper, uh, Seismitoad, uh, Ludicolo, which that's a whole trio in and of itself. Uh, then that's there was a, a whole lot of... Uh... Things that died of Rillaboom. Continue. Uh, there was a Mimikyu, a Dialga, and a Zapdos. So they're really rain heavy, and they have this like weird Mimikyu sub theme. Mm-hmm. Like Dialga Mimikyu yeah. is like not the worst, uh, especially with like Seismitoad. Seismitoad outside of rain is not all that fast, right? It's not very fast at all, no. 
But uh, what was cool was the Pelipper sets the rain, so Seismitoad and Ludicolo can go fast. Mm-hmm. The Seismitoad is set to 126, which is 252. Mm-hmm. The only thing that outspeeds you at that point is Regilecki or Priority. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ludicolo was set to 122, so we make sure t- Seismitoad outspeeds Ludicolo. Seismitoad clicks Sludge Wave to activate Ludicolo's weakness policy. Adorable. And Ludicolo would be at plus two, super duper fast, blowing everything up. However, <laughs> the team I was playing happened to have Tailwind, so I just click Tailwind, and then I outspeed everything again. And I just, I, I pick everything off one by one, and I just leave this Ludicolo that's now at minus one thanks to Snarls after his weakness policy was activated, just to sit there and do nothing. Yeah, I can, I can see how that wouldn't end well. Um, I know I played with Ludicolo last week for laddering, and the entire time, I'm just like, this wants rain, but it's not fast enough inside of rain to really abuse it now, because you have a base 200 Pokemon in the format that beats up rain. Yep. So it's really hard to use Ludicolo efficiently, and as a result, it just felt like a worse version of Kyogre. Like, yeah. when when Ludi was good, it was absurd. But at the end of the day, it felt just real weak, and it felt like it didn't do anything outside of rain. Ludi Colo is usually on teams because you need an answer to ground on. Sure. That's usually what Ludicolo's job is. It answers opposing Kyogre and it answers Groudon. If it's if you don't see either of those, you never bring Ludicolo otherwise. Uh, usually they're you, also assault vest. Do you know how much Kyogre does to Groudon in the sun? Like on a, it's, on a switch in? It's like it's like half. Um depending on depends see. on the Kyogre set. But I believe if there's no items, if it's like just Mystic Water. If they're 252 HP, it's supposed to be supposed to be about half, if I remember right. Let's see. This is... Uh, I have 252 HP, and then for simplicity's sake, I threw, uh, we'll say, 52 into special defense. Why not? I'm feeling generous. That's actually uh, probably pretty normal. Uh, it would be 48, right? No. Yeah, 52. No, 52 is the minimum. It's, it's 44 and 52. Yep. So let's see. This is going to be modest. Um, let's see. We want Mystic Water. Where is my Mystic Water? There it is. We want 252 Special Attack. And we want to click Water Spout. Water Spout. Um, that would explain why. There we go. Uh, 69 to 82%. Yeah. In the so sun. Low, low rolls about half, <laughs> high rolls at 80. Not surprised. <laughs> Just like, well, good luck. Like, yep. so the the argument of needing Ludi to destroy Kyogre, I mean, uh, needing Ludi to beat up Groudon is just like, nah. Uh, no, no, I'll no, just... no, 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 you, you misunderstand me. You... People are pairing it with Kyogre. Ludicolo oh. by itself oh. is for the teams okay. that don't that don't play Rain that want to be able to beat Kyogre and Groudon. Play Ludicolo because Ludicolo resists or is neutral to everything that they do. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm following you. You're you're thinking with Kyogre. It's not with the Kyogre teams. Kyogre can handle Groudon all by itself. That's fine. It's gotcha. the teams that want Kyogre answers that also just happen to answer Groudon as well. Gotcha. Now I'm following you. Now you're following. Uh, fun fact, there's no Groudon on this list. I just noticed that when you were talking about it. I was like, oh yeah, there's no Groudon huh. on this list at all. Okay. We have a Ho-Oh. Let's see. We have seven Xerneas. Yep. I just want to I wanna do math. Uh, twenty three are in the top fifth are in the top sixteen. There's twenty three of our restricteds right there. Plus four eight twelve sixteen there. What did I do? I screwed up. Carl, I screwed up. So you have seven Xerneas. 
Yep. Four Kyogre, yep. four Zacian, four yep. Calyrex, four Calyrex Ice. Yep. So that's 16 plus 7, which is 23. Yep. Then and we have three Lunala. Plus three. It's 26. Yep. Then we have two Eternatus. Yep. 28. Then we have a Reshiram. 29. Uh, a Ho-Oh. 30. And, and, and a Dialga. Dialga. Okay. Interesting. I just... You know, obviously this is a best of three tour and everything. I just, I don't know. I'm always curious just to make sure that everyone's playing a restricted, you know. I I, <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to do that math. I just did. I mean, it's fine. Um, we ain't got to worry about that. We'll talk about ground a ton when we get back to the series 11. Trust me on that. I just, okay. I know we have the uses stats up here on the page. My next thought was, huh, I wonder how many, like, what percentage of teams are playing Xerneas. I'm like, I can take that number and divide it by 31, and that'll give you my percentage. Man, well, I don't know why Carl doesn't have that on here. Don't yell at me. <laughs> Everyone can see how I'm looking at you right now. I can't see your face, but I Everybody just Everybody else gets to. I know it is completely blank and just staring at me like I'm an idiot, and that's okay. <laughs> I, I I don't know why my next thought was, huh, I wonder how much percentage that makes of the restricteds. <laughs> well, we, we, we can answer that question pretty easily, <sighs> Look, man. I don't know what I'm doing, Okay. Well, if you don't know what you're doing, then I don't think you're ready to move on to this top cut. Let's let's talk some top cut. So we have our first place team here. Uh, this was in the hands of Silly. Congrats to them. They will be getting an ATX Choice Band uh, in the mail, hopefully soonish. That was that was the prize, by the way. Was an ATX mm-hmm. Choice Band. Um, yep, yep. I believe they. I don't know if this is a rental or what. But this team seems very familiar. <laughs> I feel lie. like I, I have seen this before. Uh, so it's Xerneas, Incineroar, Volcarona, Rillaboom, Rapid Strike, Urshifu, and Regilecki. This feels super standard. I'm not surprised this one. Um, this is probably this this is probably one of the teams that requires the most skill to play. And if you're very, very practiced with it, then you're going to do really, really well. Yep, it, it pays off in dividends to play this team. As much um, as you possibly can. There's nothing unique, crazy here. Um, the big thing we have open team sheets because Top Cut was open, so that's mm-hmm. what we're looking at right now. Uh, we have Woodhammer on Rillaboom. That's about the biggest crazy we see here. Yeah. Other other than that, this is pretty standard. Uh, overheat struggle bug on Citrusberry Volcarona as your damaging attacks. Nothing really surprising there. Um, Mystic Water Urshifu tells me that this is probably, uh, a more, like, bulky variant. Probably. Uh, like, if, if I was to guess, if you're not Sash, if you are playing Mystic Water, you're most likely bulky, uh, bulky Adamant. So you can still do a ton of damage with your Searching Strikes. So I'm not yeah. really surprised to see that. Um, Sash on your Eliki. Yep, nothing overly exciting there. Like, I mean end of the day like the most exciting thing about this team is you have woodhammer on rillaboom and you have taunt on ensign like yeah, past, past that this is pretty run of the mill and that you know that's not to discredit the team or anything else this team is very well put together it's a very very good team um it's just it's what you would expect this team to be yeah uh second place here in the hands of justified joey uh, we have another Xerneas team. A little bit different. Um, some swaps here. Uh, Xerneas, Incineroar, and Urshifu all stayed. We changed grass types out for Amoongus with Rocky Helmet, so that's kind of cool. Uh, and then we added a Galarian Moltres and a Landorus uh, Incarnate. Not really not really surprised to see Landorus here. Um, it pairs well with like this Xerneas. Like, the, the idea of like, Landorus plus Xerneas is pretty, pretty tried and true at this point. Uh, Rocky Helmet Amoongus is fantastic against opposing 
Urshifu's. So like, especially in the mirror here, in the in the top in in uh, the finals, like having a Moongus, I'm sure just does a ton because you're you're able to just deter anything they have going on with their Xerneas. Uh, we don't have clear smog, so like that is a like potential out. Uh, your opponent's able to do like power, uh, geomancy and then just assassin gleam, so you don't have to worry about the the redirection side of Amoongus. But you still have to worry about Amoongus just going, all right, take a nap. Night, night, go to bed, yep. Yeah. Um, the other cool thing, I think, and probably the reason that uh, we saw who we saw in first place versus second place, this Galarian Moltres kind of sticks out. Like, it's fine in anything but the Xerneas Mirror. And this is, like, the one Pokemon you probably want to bring against the rest of... Uh, Against the rest against the rest of Silly's team, like it's really good in Incineroar, it's good into Volcarona, it's good into Rillaboom, it's good into Urshifu. But you can't safely bring it because the Xerneas and the Regilecki on the opposing side just kept it out of the game, so your best answer to four of the six Pokemon has to sit on the bench. Yeah, which I mean it not not only that, but because this is the, the Citrus very ver, uh, variant of, of Moltres, um it doesn't line up particularly well against like the the Eliki on the opponent's side. There's there's a lot to be desired when it comes to this Moltres in the matchup that comes down to the finals. Um, if if this was like the assault vest variant that uh, you and I have played that Aaron put together, um, you can take those hits from Eliki, be able to get your plus one off it that way, and then. Sure, you're not getting your nasty plot, but like end of the day, you're not trying to click nasty plot in that matchup anyway. Yeah, um, you're just clicking snarl and sucker punch and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, trying to chip away at your opponent and be able to eventually uh, come in with your your own Xerneas and get to do your thing then. Yeah. Um, the other big difference that probably might have swung this matchup a little weird, uh, their Urshifu is Choice Scarf. Which is very unique. Um, personally, I don't know how to feel about it. I I think I, I, I think I did the math for this before one ninety because I I checked for a dark Urshifu, mm -hmm. so I think it gets to one ninety with Scarf or something like that. I can't remember. Let's see, you get one sixty seven naturally. So no, you get you get to like one fifty something naturally. If uh -huh. you play, if you play, if you play, because most of the time you're wanting to play adamant still. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I'm, yeah, I'm doing. So you're I'm not, doing... you're not, you're not jolly. You're adamant usually. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm doing so calcs do... for jolly. Jolly gets it to one sixty seven, right? Uh, no, jolly gets it to one sixty four. What's one sixty seven then? Base one hundred. That's what it is. I was close. I knew that number stuck out for a reason. <laughs> Uh, I think Jolly is Jolly is one sixty four for Urshifu, which is still fast. Um, but a lot of the times you just want to run Adamant still because you still want to hit hard. Oh, for sure. Uh, if you're if you're doing scarf things like you you're lacking the offensive power most likely, or you're 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 willing to give up the potential bulk to guarantee that you move before your opponent does. The problem is, is because you uh, base 97 speed, 98. Base, ni base 97 is 149. Okay, so adamant. 149 gets you to... And it's 163 if you're, if you're jolly. You see the 223.5, which rounds down, right? Yeah. Okay. Dude, my, my brain is absolutely fried tonight. I, I don't blame you. <laughs> it has been an extremely long week, and it's only going to get longer. Um, so getting to 223, you outspeed, like, you outspeed Dragapult? That's, like, the fastest thing that you outspeed? Uh-huh. Which then allows you, like, I mean, that, that means you outspeed everything except for Eliki outside of Tailwind. Uh, as opposed to, like, other Scarf users. So, yeah. you're willing to give up the bulk to just guarantee KOs at that point. And I'm mm -hmm. fine with that. 
I don't love it. I don't hate it. That's kind of where I'm at. Like, obviously, your opponent can't click protect in front of Urshifu. So, like, they're going to be taking your searching strikes or a close combat into whatever you want. Yeah. The downside is, is, like, you have Prankster Tailwind in this format. That's pretty decent. You have a bunch of fake out in this format. Uh, you have a bunch of priority moves that deal with deal with Urshifu pretty effectively. So not having the ability to protect your Urshifu means that in these situations where you want to or you aren't able to switch out, uh, where you want to click protect or you aren't able to switch out, it's less than optimal in those situations. Agreed. I don't love it. Ooh. I don't hate it. But, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Moving on to your current favorite team that you're excited to play with. Dude, this team's sweet. Uh, this is from Tutti Fruity, aka Rose on Discord on the uh, on the Battlefy. Uh, this is Primarina Septile with doing like grass pledge, water pledge things that we used to see way back when. So this then sets Swamp, which halves your opponent's speed for mm -hmm. five turns. Something like that. So, like, it's a additional way of, like, speed control. And having it on, like, Septile plus Primarina is actually pretty interesting because Septile being one of the faster Pokemon in, in the format, and then you add in Unburden on top of that means that there's a non-zero chance that, like, you're going to be firing off a Water Pledge into whatever your opponent has on the field at you know essentially plus one priority yeah and uh, the rest of this team is filled out with uh calyrex ice incineroar volcarona and uh orangaroo found one we found an orangaroo for you yeah so there's there's a couple of really interesting things i like about this of course i'm a i'm a big sucker for orangaroo um i'm a big sucker for basically any of the horses in this game uh incense obviously extremely good Volcarona, I I think is very interesting on specifically this team, seeing how we have Quiver Dance. Uh we have Quiver Dance, Struggle Bug, Fiery Dance. So like being able to like set up on your opponent if you go like fake out plus quiver dance is pretty great. And then you should outspeed a ton of things. I'm not You're missing the cool play here. Oh it's Quiver Dance instruct Quiver Dance. Of course. How could I forget? <laughs> so the idea of the Volcarona here is as, as it's your second sweeper, essentially. Uh -huh. Like, the the Primarina Sceptile thing's a cool gimmick, but it's never going to actually, like, it's yeah, not going to win you the game. It's not ending the game by itself. Um, the, the, the thing that ends the game is your Calyrex Ice, or, your, or in this case, our Volcarona, with Fiery Dance and Quiver Dance both being great instruct targets and things like that also struggle bugs just really good at doing at, at being an instruct target i'm actually curious because i i don't know volcarona's stats off the top of my head so i'm curious how fast volcarona is after we quiver dance so zero investment we're at 120 um if we are a positive nature zero investment we're 132 so that means after let's see we would want at least one quiver dance that puts us to 198 if we're positive nature with zero investment so we not bad. we're we probably have a non-zero amount of speed investment if we are positive nature um we could also just be like modest and just like say quiver dance is going to be our form of speed uh, between that and potentially grass, like the, the swamp terrain, we're going to be able to just guarantee outspeed things with Volcarona anyway. And like, again, yeah, snowball. if you, if you get a single quiver dance, like the only things that really are outspeeding you are Scarfmons, Tailwind and Eleki. Yeah. So like, you're, you're not terrible. You are, you are a base 100. So I'm sure you do have a non-zero amount of speed investment on this. Just so you can't outspeed opposing, uh, like opposing base, base one hundreds, after a uh, after a plus one, yeah. So I'm curious as to exactly how much you can do with this. I 
I, I don't think I've played with Quiver Dance Volcarona in this format at all. So I'm interested to see. I tried see... it once, and it was it was interesting, but I wasn't pairing it with Instruct like this player was. This I think you're going to have a lot of fun with Lavender mm-hmm. for this one. I personally wouldn't enjoy it because there's just too many gimmicks running around for it. Oh, but see, I, I, I love it. I think you would enjoy it. Yeah. I'm very excited to try this one out. Um, I have not actually recorded as of now, so I have no idea how this scene went, but, you know, it is what it is. Yep. Uh, moving on, we have our other third, fourth place team, other person in top four. Um, Youngster Jazz with a Zacian team here. It seems super standard, uh, other than the Grimmsnarl, which is really cool. This is very reminiscent of what I was trying to do with my Grim Snarl on my Zygarde team, except I had Spirit Break instead of Foul Play. And then we've got Incineroar, Amoongus, Gyarados, Landorus to kind of fill it out. These all are very common to play alongside Zacian, just so you don't have Zacian take any unnecessary damage or reduce the damage that it would take. I really like Grim Snarl, Gyarados, Zacian together. Like I don't I don't know why particularly those three they don't have like at face value they don't have anything that's super synergistic about them. Um but I, I do definitely like the idea of just like those three, especially if you can set up screens to protect your Gyarados, uh which then of course makes Zacian look better, so that then you you're being able to live more hits with Zacian, so then you're able to deal more damage because you are in a very fast Pokemon uh all things considered so you're able to pick up ko's as needed yep um the only other op- weird thing here is we're akaberry amoongus which it's not crazy it's just not common anymore i think honestly since we don't have it on anything else i would just be sash probably you could probably get away with it here yeah i i honestly think sash is probably just fine on amoongus um and I, I think if we're Sash, we probably want Protect somewhere, which probably, probably means we're cutting Clear Smog, which then makes our Xerneas matchup worse. Yeah. But, like, we have Landorus, we have Speed Control in the form of Gyarados having Icy Wind here, uh, we have Thunderous on, I mean, we have a Thunder thunder Wave on Grimmsnarl here, so, like, there's a non-zero chance that uh, that Landorus can just outspeed the, the Zern. But we don't have Sludge Bomb either. Hmm. So one of the many things I've learned from playing against Xerneas is you never want to try and attack a with the Landorus. The Landorus is not a very good answer into Xerneas. It's not the worst. The like big obviously, is, is yeah, you want to be bulky Lando so you survive mm-hmm. hits from Zacian. But at that point, you sacrifice enough. You can't. You can't outspeed Xerneas and still survive Zacian. Those are the issues. That's the balancing act you're trying to play, and it's very hard for Landorus to have that good bulk while also being able to deal with a Xerneas. Because if that Xerneas ever gets power Geomancy off, you're not touching it. There, even super effective hits aren't going to do enough for it because that Landorus just doesn't do enough damage. Yeah, it's very interesting. I don't I don't think I care for Stone Edge on on Sheer Force Landos. I like Rock Slide better. That's just my opinion. Stone Edge doesn't get a boost for any reason, right? Not that I'm aware of. So like it sure just has it's a high crit chance. It's single target, but like then you're also submissible to all the Intimidates running around, so, like, you're reliant on a crit to deal with, like, opposing incens, I guess. Which, like, you also just have Earth Power for. So, like, yeah. Stone Edge is really good for, like, Volcaronas and, like, all the flying types running around. Which yeah, is, the like, random Charizards we see and all that stuff. Oh, well, I mean, you know, specifically here we have, like, Gyarados. Um, it lines Tornadus. Up, it lines up well against opposing Landorus. Um... I think I still rather have Rock Slide. Yeah. I could take it or leave it. I th- but end of the day I think I would rather have Rock Slide. Yeah. Uh moving on, we have our first of many Kyogre teams. Uh this one is from Izzy twenty two. Uh she is one of the mods of ATX, if I remember correctly. 
Um, she does a lot for them. I'm not sure exactly what, but she does a lot for them. I am actually not sure on that one off the top of my head. Um, anywho, the team is Torn Ogre, fairly standard. We have our Tornadus, our Kyogre, and our Serena. Uh, we are bringing in Weavile from Santi's team, uh, doing some cool stuff with that. And then to just spice it up even more, we have a quick claw ditto. Look, man, when it's good, it's good. And choice specs Reggie Drago. I actually really like uh, specifically quick claw ditto here. I I think I like it. So it's really weird because scarf is obviously very good on ditto, but then you're you're locked into one move, and so like if you need to. Uh, get like a protect off or something like that, then you switched in you your ditto for basically no reason at that point. Um, and like, as a result, like, I, I, I think you would rather have Sash on, uh, on Tornadus here than, than on ditto. But I could also see like swapping out the Sash on Tornadus and doing life orb things. Um, probably had to drop Heat Wave for probably Icy Wind at that point, maybe. A lot of the Tornadus I see tend to be more on the bulky side. Mm-hmm. They usually tend to be, like, Citrus Berry plus Bulk to survive hits, things like that. Um, so I could see just, like, being a bulky Tornadus instead of Focus Sash Tornadus. Mainly because it feels really bad to just have your focus sash accidentally broken because they decided to fake out your tornadoes and kind of things like that. Dude, we haven't even talked about the spiciest tech on this team. Oh, I know. I've I've been waiting to talk about it because you, you just got so sidetracked on Quick Claw Ditto. Look, I just happen to see it now. <laughs> <laughs> so not only are we Specs Drago uh, with triple dragon move, but then we also have Sleep Talk. Yeah. So it's it either ingenious works. or the worst thing I've ever seen in my life, and there was literally no in between. <laughs> and that's not how it probably plays out. It's either the best or the worst thing you've ever done. But like, what else are you gonna run on it? Uh, you get hyper beam. I think you get hyper beam. You get ancient power. Probably. Actually, I'm not entirely sure on that one. I if think Reggie Lecky so. gets it, Reggie Drago should get it. <laughs> I literally have a uh, showdown pulled up, so let me... Reggie, Drago, and we want Ancient Power. That is a yes. Yeah, not surprised. Sleep Talk? Why Sleep Talk? So when you get put to sleep, you get to just spam Sleep Talk since your choice specs. So depending on how many turns you are asleep, you'll get to do damage still boosted with your choice specs. <laughs> Did you know that Snore has a chance to flinch? Yeah. I I, I can say I've literally never seen it, so I, I didn't know this. <laughs> well, now you do. Man, Sleep Talk is weird, man. Yep. But, like, otherwise your options are Ancient Power, Hyper Beam, Round Snore... Or another dragon move. Yeah. Um, what other status I, moves do we get? Well, you don't want any of them with choice specs, so. Yeah, but I mean, there's got to be something better than sleep talk. Eh. You could spam endure. No. One screen. No. All right, I'm out of options. Yeah, that's why you play sleep talk. <laughs> ah, laser focus. No. They'll never see it coming, Carl. No, I'm good. <laughs> oh. Actually, Up next. laser focus is kind of sick if you pair this thing next to, like, exactly a Rangaroo. Because it doesn't say the next attack, it's until the end of the next turn. So you can laser focus, set up trick room, and then dragon energy, crit, crit instruct dragon energy again well that only works if you're not choice specs I, i'm just saying i'm not <laughs> i'm not saying in this exact instance i but you know me being me i saw something stupid and now i want to do it 
Of course. Continue. Uh, I'm going to build a team while we talk. <laughs> no. Next team is another Kyogre team. Uh, pretty much same standard stuff. Kyogre, Tornadus, Serena. We got a Vamoongus here as extra redirection. Uh, we're carrying Regilecki to fight opposing uh, Kyogre teams even more. And Incineroar to round this one out too. This is a very offensive Incineroar from the looks of it. Because we're carrying Darkest Lariat as well. As, instead of like as well as or... Flare Blitz as well. Yeah. Having, you know, double damaging attacks on Incin is very interesting. Especially since we are Brain. I could see just dropping Flare Blitz for like Taunt or... Um, or, uh, help me. Which one are you looking for? I don't know. Snarl. There's there we snarl. go. Yeah, that one. I can see having Darkest Lariat plus Snarl, since we do have Kyogre. Just be a dark type. No fire type. No fire types need to apply. I mean, your fire type is already negated by rain anyway, so, I mean, you're just, like, reliant on clicking Flare Blitz when it's very good. Yeah. Which then is negated by potentially rain. I don't know. I could take or leave that. Um, I do like the idea of Wakan Tornadus, but as I've done the calcs in the past, you technically can KO through it. It takes a lot, yeah. but you technically can. Yep. Um, so, like, if that's a thing you're willing to do, then sure. What's really interesting about this one as well is we have Rain Dance and Taunt for opposing, uh, like, opposing Tornadus. Um, and, like, of course... A decent way of combating Kyogre is to take away the weather, so then being able to just rain dance in front of it is another another way to just punish them. Yep. Past Pretty that, standard. yeah, I was going to say past that, I don't have really a lot to say. Uh, Mental Herb Amoongus is very interesting as a way to, like, just get people. Like, nice taunt, idiot. Take your spore now. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's become a common thing again, too. Mm-hmm. Next up, we have a Calyrex Shadow Team featuring Dragonite. This is a... I'm assuming this is an all-offensive set since we have Life Orb, Super Power, Extreme Speed, Dual, Wing Beat, and Fire Punch. <laughs> I'm honestly surprised to see Life Orb and not like Assault Vest here. Is it somewhere else? Oh, we have Relic Room. That explains it. Okay. That's why. Yep. Um, um, but what's really interesting about this is because we're Life Orb on Dragonite... Um, like, you get to play Sash on Cali Shadow, and that's just fine. Yeah. I I have tried it multiple, multiple times. I have never been a fan of Draining Kiss on Cali Shadow. I just have not been, I have just not found it to be useful. Yep. I uh, would. Other than, other than that, the rest of this feels fairly standard. Like, you have your standard Firewater Grass Core. Uh, Suicune's got speedy control with Tailwind, obviously. Uh, pretty standard sets all around for the most part. Why Throat Chop over uh, Snarl or Darkest Lariat on Ensign? Because it stops opposing Snarl. It stops Roar. Um, so it's just a good deterrent against opposing Incense. It stops also Parting stops Shot? Parting okay. Yeah, also stops Parting Interesting. Shot. I was going to say, I wasn't entirely sure, but the more I thought about it, the more it made sense that it does. Um, yeah. And When you can turn off half of Incineroar's moveset, it's pretty good. So, like, another thing that's really interesting about this team is just, like, where all the items are. Uh, the fact that we have Life Orb on Dragonite means that then we have Sash on Cali Shadow, which means that then we have Magnet on Eleki. But, like, you could also just have Assault Vest on Dragonite and therefore have your Life Orb on Shadow... And then Sash on Eliki, and then, like, Miracle Seed on Rillaboom. So, like, yeah. this this team feels like the longer it goes in best of three, uh, the better set up your opponent is to be able to, one, know what, what is going on with your team. Which, obviously, you can make the case for any team. But, specifically this one, it seems very obvious. The longer it goes, the more favored your opponent is, I feel like. This, okay. this is a very, very hyper-offensive team. And so, like, you don't want your opponent to gain information, and as a result, you just want to click the, the move that's going to KO your opponent as quickly as possible. So then your opponent has to start making these guesses as to what's going on with your team, um, and to be able to just next level them and take them out. Yeah. 
moving out, getting ready to move out of our top eight here. Our last in the top eight series here is uh, Professor Ragna's Xerneas team. Uh, again, feels pretty standard except for this Cartana down here. Um, Man, we have we crazy. have Cartana, Volcarona, and Amoongus. This team does not like Max Airstreams. Well, good thing it's not <laughs> Just like moving forward, you just have like literally no switch in for a Max Airstream in Series 11. Yeah. Um, another Throat Chop in Cinnabar, which is really cool. Another Roar on Suicune here, too. Um, that feels pretty standard anymore, honestly. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised, yeah. I, I could see Protect, I could see Roar, especially since we are lefties. I'm surprised to not see Protect, so you can just, like, stall and get an extra turn of recovery. Especially since we... Suicune suffers the most from four move slot syndrome. I you I did. think you would really want Protect on this team if you had uh, Rillaboom instead of Cartana here. Like, if you had Rillaboom, Suicune, and lefties on Suicune, like, then having Protect to be able to just recover so much back so quickly uh, could really make a difference. But because we are Cartana... I don't know if I like lefties on Suicune at that point. Well, your only other option really is a berry. Yeah, it's like Bulky Berry, which doesn't line up particularly well against Kelly's Shadow, which is like one of the things you want to be able to have Suicune in against. Yeah. So it really just comes down to how bulky is your Suicune to be able to take those hits. Yeah. If you can, if you can make it where uh, you can take a hit snarl them and then be able to take another hit uh i think bulky berry is probably better mm -hmm. because uh, man i would i would have to do calcs to see how much snarl does into cali shadow especially in with doubles up it'd be it, it would be something i would have to be able to really go in depth and look at but i don't have time for unfortunately right now nope Next up, a Calyrex Shadow team featuring Dark Urshifu so, ooh, as the ooh. as the unique one. So there's a lot of things going on with this team that overlaps with a lot of what I said about the last Cali Shadow team. Um, so because we have the Life Orb here, that means that we can we feel free to put the Sash on Urshifu, but. As yep. a result, like your opponent has to play around either Sash on Urshifu or Sash on Eliki. And like unfortunately, Scarf Eliki still dies to Rillaboom. So like that doesn't play out well in that specific matchup. <sighs> it's really interesting, man, because Electro Ball does so much into like literally everything. Oh yeah, like Scarf Electro Ball just hits everything stupid. Like hard. there it doesn't matter what what you're switching in is taking a hit. Uh, fun fact, this is Turtle Mania's team. I don't know if you know Turtle mm -hmm. Mania on Twitter. Uh, this is their team. Interesting. I really like this Suicune set. Like, I know we've talked about Suicune in the last two teams. I really like this Suicune set. Um, I don't, and I'll tell you okay, why. Okay, talk, talk me through I it. Don't like, I don't like Icy Wood and Tailwind on the same Suicune set. Is that... Is that go for uh, Tornadus as well, or is it just a Suicune thing? Uh, it's the same thing with Tornadus. Okay. You, you, you want one and not the other, usually. And usually you're clicking... If you have Icy Wind, you don't need Tailwind. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, your, your Tailwind on Suicune isn't a Prankster Tailwind. So if they get Tailwind up, you have to wait your turn to set up your own Tailwind. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like on Tornadus, you can get Tailwind off and you can do that stuff and be fine. So it's like I like Icy Wind on Suicune more than I like Tailwind, and I like Tailwind more on Torna on Tornadus than I like Icy Wind. I agree with that, and I never like seeing them together on the same Pokemon. I understand that. I think one of the things about this Suicune set in particular, um, and like I mean, this is more of like a blanket statement about Suicune in general. I feel like because it is being played as this bulky, like, support mon that you really need to be doing Tailwind Helping Hand, like, shenanigans that, that we've seen, you're really lacking offensive pressure. So having multiple attacking moves like Scald and Icy Wind just 
doesn't really help, I don't think. I can see dropping Scald on this set for Snarl. Is that I crazy? I like having Scald specifically so we don't get blown out by Wide Guard. That's fair. I like having Snarl as well because Snarl just is very good damage and very good right now because everything's a special attacker because Intimidate is so popular. Mm-hmm. So those those are just my two sets on Suicune. After doing the deep dive, like I'm very picky about my Suicune sets now. Um, like if I see Protect, it's okay, but it's very rare anymore. Like you never, almost never, want Protect on Suicune. I think I think having Protect on this one because we have Rillaboom, I think could be fine. Having Protect plus Lefties instead of Citrus here, because again, like. I guess in this case, because we don't have Snarl, you don't care about this in, like, the Cali Shadow Mirror. So you're fine with, like, having whatever your opponent do. Um, mm-hmm. Cali Shadow does not line up particularly well against the opposing mirror because you're not... Because you're Life Orb and not Sash, and you don't really have a solidified way of setting Tailwind or having that form of speed control. Um... Mm-hmm. Like, I guess you have Eliki here for extremely fast Electrowebs, but then your opponent is still outspeeding you in the mirror, and then you get Astro Barraged, and then you lose both of your bonds. Yeah. How fast does Eliki get with Scarf? Depends on nature and all that stuff, but uh, 252 gets you to... So if we are 277... 378... If we're 277, we get to 415. Yeah. And then 252 gets to 370 something? 378, yeah. Man, that's fast. Oh, yeah. That's still crazy fast. That is faster than the Colossals in Series 10. Mm-hmm. In, seri- in Series 8. Like, just think about that for a minute. Colossal, one of the fastest Pokemon, and the Pokemon that was the speed bench for a very long time. Scarf Aleki, if you're modest, at 252 investment, will outspeed still. That is insane. <laughs> absurd, man. Absolutely absurd. Are you ready to talk about Frostmoth? Sure. Okay, so this one's from Padillac. We know Padillac mm-hmm. very, very well. They played a bunch of our events. They're set up for our invitation and whatnot. So they brought Joe's team that he's been playing on ladder. It's Frostmoth, Lunala. It's really cool. I've been watching a little bit of it, like on Joe's on Joe UX Nine stream, <laughs> and it's cool to watch it. I still don't know like how it wins games or anything like that. I'm assuming just by Lunala stack attack and carrying the team on its back a lot of the time. Uh, but the Frostmoth is kind of cool because you get access to things like Wide Guard, uh, Struggle Bug, so it's kind of Volcarona ish. But it, you just get like Wide Guard, which is cool. It is Volcarona esque. Uh, you don't have Redirection, but you have like Helping Hand and Wide Guard instead. Yeah. Um, I'm um, very is curious. Is Frostmoth one of the weird Pokemon that get Tailwind too? Yes. So that's something to think about, too. Come here, Showdown. You're still open. Let's <laughs> see. Frost Moth. We do get Tailwind. Interesting. So, yeah. Just things to think about there. Uh, we have multiple Trick Room setters, and we have Amoongus to kind of help us set up Trick Room. Stack Attacka, I've said it once. I'll probably say it again before the end of Series 10. This thing is a second Restricted. This should be considered a restricted slot. You should not be allowed to play with this plus another restricted. This Pokemon is way too good. I like Stack Attacka. I do too. <laughs> That's all Some I have reason, to say about this it. Thing, it has two four times weaknesses and is still a monster. Mm-hmm. I just don't get it. Yeah, it uh, it hits quite hard, man. I'm very curious about this Frost Moth. Um, well, you have to go check out Joe's t- uh, Joe's stream to figure it out. I might do that tomorrow. I'm going to have a bunch of free time. I'll have to check it out, ne- see if I can find something on it. Next up, we have... Who was it? Amethyst? 
on the Battlefy. I'm not sure their actual Discord name, but it was Amethyst on the Battlefy with, I think, what is our last Xerneas team? Yes. Uh, this feels pretty standard, too, other than this Landorus being Landorus Therian. <laughs> I do like the Rocky Helmet Landorus Therian, though. I have been tinkering with Stealth Rock Rocky Helmet, like bulky Landorus, mm-hmm. and it has been so much fun. Man, this is the... I, I, I know Tiki would be... I know Tiki Chase would be proud. <laughs> I think this is the second Koba Amoongus we've seen today. It is. Second or third, I can't remember. Uh, it's definitely the second one that I remember. I really like Pollen Puff Amoongus as well. It is, it is Pollen definitely... Puff's, Pollen Puff's good with, like, the Xerneases, the mm-hmm. Zygarde's, the, the setup Pokemon that take damage, and you want them to stay for a long time in the field. It's very good in those situations. The fact that, uh, we are pairing this, of course, with Xerneas is just really interesting. I also really like this Xerneas set, so you can, like... Uh, lead this with Ensign, get a fake out off, and substitute instead of Geomancy, and then your opponent is, like, forced to react. Or even yeah. even next to, like, Amoongus, if you can just, like, protect... Like, your opponent is anticipating doubling into Amoongus to take it out, which, unfortunately, we don't have protect here, so that wouldn't quite work, but... Um, like, there's situations where you can, like, protect Amoongus, set up a substitute... And then Rage Powder plus Geomancy, and then just fire off Moon Blast for the rest of the game behind your sub, because they're never going to be able to outspeed you to hit you. If I remember correctly, I believe this is Paul Ruiz, uh Xerneas team from the Players' Cup 25th Invitational. Okay. I believe that's what this is, because I remember Substitute Xerneas on his team as well. Yeah, I like it quite so this, a bit that here. Might be, that might be what this is. Which is really cool. I like it. I like this, like the special lander is theory with intimidate, rocky helmet, just be like a, a pivot Pokemon all the time. I like that a lot. We have another scarf Urshifu here as well. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, that one you could probably get away with more because you have this Amoongus here to redirect mm-hmm. it away from the Urshifu. So that's kind of just like a cool thing. I do like that. You lose to the uh, the scarf Eliki. But you know, well, obviously, <laughs> you you lose to every variant of Eliki. But you know, you can't can't win them all, man. Yeah, our last team here is very reminiscent of the tail end of series uh, eight, where we got um, the double weather teams, like the Kyogre, Torkoal, Venusaur teams. I was getting ready to say, I'm like, man, this is like triple weather, and I. I don't know where I was getting the third weather from. Somehow between Zapdos, P2, Grimmsnarl, that somehow sets sand. So I... this team is super cool. This is from Charisma69. This okay. was our last player in Top Cut. Our, our last, I would say last place in Top Cut. It, top Cut, because of the way it's set up, it, 9 through 12, we actually don't know and who they, placed where. There is no placing, uh, no yeah. placing rounds for them. That's literally just... Well, it's just the order I I read them in. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I am sorry that we you are last, or I'm happy that you're last because your team is going to be the one that probably we talk about the most here in a minute. Because this is super cool. I hate this Kyogre set. You don't. <laughs> I hate it. I absolutely hate this man. And it's there. Okay, let me let me rephrase that. I have never played with. The, the Calm Mind Lefties Kyogre set, but I played against it enough that I just absolutely despise it. <laughs> it is so obnoxious because people don't in- anticipate it, and it just gets people. And then, like, that's why it's good. Yeah. It is. This this team is super cool. Yep. Yep. I, we have I like a Venusaur lot of what's Torkoal. going on here. We've got Kyogre Zapdos. P2's just a really bulky Pokemon that's really good into opposing Kali Shadow that this team seems to struggle with a little bit. And then we have this Grimmsnarl that is carrying Darkest Lariat. Yeah, just punch him. Just punch him. Use that base 120 attack. Punch him. Punch him hard. P2 Grimmsnarl. There's your there's your Kali Shadow matchup. Literally, just bring that plus whatever weather you want in the back. Yep, you'll be fine. Lock it up. Done. 
And with that, that is our top cut. Anything you know, else? man, I'm uh, pretty satisfied with it. Yeah. Really, really unique teams that uh, you know, I'm going to be playing the Sceptile team this next week. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see exactly um, what what Series 10 has left in it uh, this next couple of weeks. And honestly, I'm kind of excited to get back to, to Dynamax. Like, I know last week I was pretty down on the format as a whole, but mm-hmm. I don't know. It is what it is. Um, I'm ready for a change of pace, even if it is just a minor one. So Yeah. Having something I'll... different after... I'm going to be honest. The Pokemon Company has spoiled the heck out of us. Let's mm-hmm. be real here. Because if I remember correctly, like, previous formats lasted a year or, like, six yep. months or something like that. Yep. So the All fact year. that we get new formats like every three months is insane actually and and that's why this is like all these newer players you see all these newer players like complaining it's like oh well why are we going back to this and you also see the older players complaining because the formats keep changing every so often it's a lose-lose situation i I was telling tiff about this uh i think today it was like you know we we had the new announcement but is not really new because we're just going back and like ever since series seven has just been essentially two formats with you know minor changes. Yeah. Um so I don't know. I I think it's probably better than the uh than the year long format, but at the same time I wish there was more more uh dynamic changes to them. And the Pokemon Company could have changed, done dynamic changes. Like, there's been a bevy of options. They've introduced ban lists. That was mm-hmm. new. That's something that they can do. Like, I'm surprised they didn't do that for this next series, especially since it's, like, this r- silly, just nonsense of three months between now and IRL events. Experiment. Play with the format some. Get, get weird with it. You don't have to play tried and true formats that people didn't like or even even more man uh you know new live events are coming back in 2022 i'm assuming that means they could start as early as january why make this format three months if you're gonna have a new form if you're gonna have irl events coming back here that soon i don't think we get obviously any the argument until there i'm gonna say the argument there is well, they want to show off this format in some capacity, you know, because they haven't been able to show it off at all. So, I don't know. I, I, it is what it is. Um, I think something like Series 7 plus Band List would have been, like, my most ideal format with no with no new information added. Um, I think Series 7 plus Band List probably would have been super unique and super interesting, but... You know, I I am one of many people who play, and what I say is clearly not the the best decision or anything else, and I trust the Pokemon company to make the right choice and to keep things interesting when when they need to, so who knows. Speaking of things that are going to be interesting. Yeah, we got a small little bit of BDSP uh, news here. Very, very little, but enough to... Shape your I- enough to shape your ideas of what the game's going to be. Uh, enough to make Pokemon fans mad. I'm going to be honest, it doesn't take much. <laughs> Dude, I know. I'm going to call them out now. It does not take much to make them mad. It, it is literally the most minor things, and people are throwing a fit about it. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not telling anyone to, to judge the games in a way that is the correct way or anything else. You know, it's end of the day it is a game like it or love it it is what it is um and nothing i say is going to influence it nothing that anyone else does is going to influence what's already being made and what's already being produced especially in a game that's coming out in a month oh yeah so this game is done already this game's probably been done for 60 to 70 days at least and has been going through q and a probably for that Mm -hmm. entire period of time they're not making any changes at this point. What you are going to get is probably coming. What is already made is what we're getting in a month. And we'll probably have like day one updates from all this Q and a they're doing the past 60 days. I've already heard. Um, 
I've already heard that there's going to be a day one patch. No, oh, there honestly, always, not almost surprised. always is because yeah. they, they they rush these games so fast that there's always something that's caught after the game's been mass produced and things like that. Yeah, um, I would be more surprised if there wasn't a day one patch anymore. <laughs> right. Um, so the big the big things that we got from the Game Informer playtest thing, uh, HMs are in the game, but not true HMs. It works more like the Pokemon Ride system from Gen 7. A Pokemon comes and does it for you. Sure. Um, that, that's fine. Which is cool. Um, like, like you use the watch thing and a wild Pokemon shows up to do it. Very Pokemon Ranger-esque, I would call it. Sure. Which is that, neat. That's fine by me. Uh, that, that came out about the same time as the Gen 4 stuff, so that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, then there's single use TMs, which it's whatever. I, I don't love, um, but I also think that we have been very fortunate to have these quality of life changes in the most recent games, you know, in the last, what, probably 10 years or so of, of actual games. They've, they've made that change. So Again, I don't hate it. It does make it a more faithful remake of of Gen Four, but then the argument is as well they're taking away HM, so it's not that faithful. They're giving you oh, more whatever. room to use your moves because let's be honest here, you were just going to grab a Bidoof and have it learn every HM it could, and yep. just use that. Yep, they're just this, literally this removing away, the middleman for you. <laughs> this takes away the the need to have strength and rock climb and also you can have flash if you need it and surf and waterfall all to get to you know wherever you need to yeah it's like well that's five moves and i have six pokemon and i need all six of them to be able to fight the trainers but now i had to devote either an entire team party to one of these pokemon or devote moves like move slots to these moves that are less than ideal yeah um other things that were kind of leaked announced and told about um the underground is really cool it's probably the highlight of the game of what i'm gathering this is probably going to be what makes or breaks the game because there's already people complaining about the art style there's already people complaining about just like it's gen 4 it's it, underground. The underground has to be really, really good. I feel like mm -hmm. otherwise this game is going to just get all the hate coming at it because it's not full decks. It's not this and that they, they gave me experience share and I can't turn it off. Big whoop. <laughs> they had that in sword and shield, right? Yep. So I believe it is every game since let's go Pikachu and Eevee has had the experience share that, is isn't full, optional but it isn't optional because i know you could uh sun and moon i think had it but it was uh, you could flip it on and off you could turn i it honestly on, turn could off. not tell you i'm pretty sure i know, you could turn it I on, know turn x it and off. y was able to turn it on and off yeah uh omega ruby alpha sapphire was the same way and i'm I, pretty sure gen 7 was that way too i honestly don't remember it's been so long since i've played those games um, and then Sword and Shield, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee were the first, like, games where it's not optional. It forces you to, like, it levels Pokemon in your party, which is kind of cool, in my opinion. As someone who catches a lot of Pokemon and just mm -hmm. grinds through the game that way, I like having that as, like, as something that's on from the start. And whereas I know there's people who just, like, I'm gonna take my Chimchar and I'm gonna run it all the way to Elite Four. I don't need anybody else. And there's people who like to play like that. And you can still play like that, just just don't keep anything in your party. The other well, quality of life improvement is we get to access the box out, boxes outside of the Poké Center. Sure. We get to do the sword and shield thing. Sure. Which, Doesn't bother me any. That is fantastic, in my opinion, because I plan on catching every single Pokemon like type that I run across, and I'm just going to be swapping party members in and out constantly. I think you could make the the change back to requiring hms if they also gave it to where we had access to the the box at any point and that's, having that's access essentially to that. what they're doing 
Yeah. Uh, is making it so you have access to these HMs at all times, regardless of Pokemon. So, you know, whatever. It It's essentially saying just like, oh, you have this access and this is how it actually probably works. Mm-hmm. But it looks like in the game that a wild Pokemon appears and does it for you. When actual, I'm excited for these games. It could probably, like, you could probably explain it as, oh, I just accessed my box, grabbed whatever Pokemon had the HM, used it, put it back in the box, so on and my, so forth. My Machoke came and pushed a box for me. Yeah, exactly. Cool. I just also happen to be in a cave where there are wild Machoke. <laughs> whatever. It all just works out. Yep. Anywho, that was, that's the brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl nonsense. Not a whole lot crazy stuff there. Uh, it is not national decks. It is Gen Four decks plus platinum transfers. Sure. So anything that was transferable is going to be found in the underground. I assume. That's yes. what that's what they explained it as. So cool, whatever. So, I think we talked about this when the trailer, like the initial trailer, dropped, showing off the underground. Um, I'm pretty sure everything that was in the underground that was like new to like Sinnoh was from Platinum. Yeah. And I think there was like one or transfers. two that wasn't. Yeah. It's all the transfer mods. Things yeah. that weren't in the wild and Pokemon Diamond and Pearl but you could transfer them in from Gen 3 or like Fire Red Leaf Green or whatever. Yeah, sure. I'm fine with it all. I'm, I'm excited to get these games so we can actually play them. Same. Uh, we got a little over a month. Yep. When this comes out, it'll be less than a month. Just a little under a month. See, it comes out the 19th? Yeah, this episode will be out on the 18th. So it'll just be out a month. Interesting. The 19th is a Friday. I conveniently am off on Fridays. Interesting. I mean, if your GameStop does something for it, thursday night you could pick it up at midnight on thursday and play it all night thursday into friday i very much doubt that i don't know maybe we'll figure it out we were able to go buy kayla's switch from that from your game stopped up there yeah sure was very very lucky that we found a an oled switch very lucky i, I had one of my buddies who uh who bought one and i asked him i'm like so how is it? he's like i literally have not even had time to take it out of the box <laughs> like, yeah that sounds about right I will tell you, having the wired dock is really, really nice. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure the hard line are, uh... the hard line dock is probably my currently my favorite thing about it, because I hardly get to see it because my wife's currently playing it. Sure. Um, hard line Pokemon Unite is great. I don't lag anymore. <laughs> and when I when opponents disconnect from battles, I know it's them and not me. It's not my problem. I know I didn't do it. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Are we ready to get out of here? I think we are done for the day. All right, man. It's a, a little longer of an episode. It'll be fine. So, yeah, sure. Whatever. People like people, these long episodes. Let's be honest. People like it. And, you know, there's a bunch of data for people to go in and look at and all that stuff. And you have your fancy graphics that'll be up on the screen. It'll be great. Yep. So, as always, everyone, make sure you uh, like, comment, subscribe if you're listening on YouTube. If you're not, uh, are the video versions up everywhere else yet? Not yet. We are still waiting on okay. Spotify to get back with me. Cool. Uh, so, that'll be coming shortly. So, if you're not watching on YouTube, uh, make sure you check down the show notes to gain access to the YouTube channel. It's all there. Uh, we have all kinds of stuff going up every day of the week. Um, make sure you follow us on Twitter at LR Lessons, myself at Mr. Missouri 25, Carlos at Musical VGC. You can find us on Twitch as well at Mr. Missouri 25 and at Musical. Um, and of course, come and join our community discord. That's where you're going to be able to interact with all of us and our community and be able to play in all of our events and everything. And I'm super excited, man. Uh, we're very quickly approaching the invitational and I don't think I'm going to be able to get off to be able to help with all that, but, um, you know, what I, else I, is new, honestly, yeah. 
It's my work schedule, man. It is what it is. It's been like that for two years now, so. I, I've pretty much either run every event or pawned it off on a mod to help me out run yep. every event, so it's. I've it's helped nothing, out where I could, unusual. and that's all I can do. Yeah. So, um, I think that's it. Uh, website. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that one. LRLessons.com. I know Carl and I have been working on some stuff in the background. Um, if and when all that goes up, make sure you check it out on there. And I think that's it, everyone. I think that's finally it. Cool. So, uh, we will see you later this week with some more videos up on the YouTube channel. And, uh, we'll see you next week with another podcast. So have a wonderful day, everyone. Peace. Peace.